Hello, YouTube. <laughs> it's potty time. I know some of you were eagerly awaiting the toilet episode, wondering what uh, what was up with that. Um, a while back, while I was hanging out, browsing around Goodwill up there in Brevard County, I actually found this toilet for sale. And would you believe it was like $4.95 or something like that? It was under $5. And I couldn't pass that up, even though in previous episodes, you know, I built a custom toilet. I also showed how you could use a, um, was it, the 5 or 10 gallon paint bucket and convert that into a comfortable home style toilet. If you're interested in those videos, make sure you uh, click on the playlist for the build of Little Blue 2, you know, Grand Caravan, Dodge Grand Caravan build. It shows um, those episodes where I create the custom toilet as well as the, um, the paint bucket. But this is an actual toilet for camping or RVing. And I was, let's see, I took the label off here. I need to use some Gooby Gone to clean that. <laughs> clean that little stickiness there. Because that was where the label was for the, the $5. It was like four ninety eight or something. And I couldn't believe I actually found it at um, Goodwill. And I just couldn't pass it up. So I decided to buy it even though I really don't need one. Now, some people wonder, you know, and it's one of the topics that come up. What do you do to go to the bathroom if you're living in a van? Well, my advice, honestly, is try not to go to the bathroom in the van. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're urban stealth camping, you really shouldn't have to do number two in the van. If you park right, you know, you want to go to the bathroom before you call it a night and uh, maybe possibly park somewhere where you have access to a toilet. If you need it in the middle of the night, like an emergency, which usually means like a 24-hour Walmart or something similar. But for those of you who are purists and prefer to keep everything self-contained and want a full-blown mini RV, you're going to have to come up with some kind of toilet system. If you're fortunate enough that you have money, you could buy a toilet like this. Um, I think they sell them in like the RV or the camping sections, and they typically run about $50 to $80, maybe $100, depending on the model. But essentially, it's a little plastic bin with a toilet. And let me pause the thing here. There's a jet flying overhead. Okay, I think the jet's uh, gone now. But uh, basically, it's um, a specialized unit that it's very portable, and it's designed for you to do your business. And then you can um, basically take the, the container apart and go dump it. I'm going to show you how it works and what it looks like. When you open up the lid, you have the toilet itself. And you can see behind here, it's got a little uh, lid receptacle. This is where you can you unscrew that and you can pour just water in there. And then to pump the unit, after you do your business, you pump this. And, and I haven't tried it out yet, but I suspect when you pump it, water will come out and flush. And uh, it'll sit there and won't flush until you pull this lever. So when you pull the lever, I'm going to pull the lever here to show you what happens. You can see it opens up and dumps into a receptacle down underneath. Thank goodness there's nothing in there. <laughs> <laughs> and you can close that back up. And, you know, so that keeps the unit fairly clean. Seals in the smell somewhat. And, you know, you can close the lid back up and resume your business. Uh, and when you go to a park or some place where you can empty the unit, I have to take this out here to show you how that works. The unit basically looks like this when you look at it all around. It's a very portable unit. It's just my hand here to show you a size comparison. It's about, I would say about 14 to 16 inches tall by about 14 to 16 inches wide. Very compact. But you can see it's got these little release levers here that you can just undo. You undo one on each side. When you undo that, the unit comes apart. I think I have to do two hands here. But let me go ahead and take it apart just to show you what happens when you take it apart. It basically lifts up and it separates. So you can see the top portion here and the bottom portion, which you've closed the hole here, should be sealed. And you take this whole assembly here. It's like a little gas tank, except it's full of another type of gas. <laughs> And you go to the bathroom and you just unscrew this part here. Dump the container into the toilet, flush it, and maybe even rinse it out if you want to or just close it back up, bring it back, reassemble the unit, put the levers back on, and you're set to go. 
So, as you can see, I've reassembled the unit. It is very, very compact, very light. Well, it's light probably because I haven't put any water in it. I'm pretty sure this container up here holds about one gallon. So you would just, you know, undo that, put water in. Everything's kind of like manually operated, so not too many parts that can go wrong. Very simple to use. Now, the question is, where do you mount something like this? You see little blue, too, actually can mount this in the back if you wanted to, you know, like, I have everything disassembled right now because I was trying to demonstrate where everything would go because I had to clear out this area where I actually store the, um, the toilet here. But if it was really going to be used, I could mount it in the back like this and have it facing in so that if I had to use it, I could come back here, flip the seat up, and use the toilet back here. And then, you know, when I get ready to dump it somewhere, I have to come get it from the, the back here, pop up the, um, the rear hatch door, and take the unit out to clean. So that's one way of doing it. Basically, when you're building your van, and depending on your needs and your layout, you can put it anywhere you need to. Now, putting it back here would mean that the bed, you'd probably want to put your head that way and your feet this way, because I'm not sure you want to have your feet, your head sleeping near the toilet. But Blue is so versatile because um, I designed her to be versatile. So you can see here, this little spot right here is actually pretty much the same size as the shelving unit that I took out the cabinet. And I have this cabinet here for kitchen type stuff, as well as um, some tools, this is my garage. But this is actually gonna come back at the spot because for me personally, I don't use the toilet. You know, I, I would use this if I was out in the boonies or something or um, building the van uh, for full time traveling and living in. But I could transport this simply just by putting it here and taking it with me or in my case, I actually put it here on top of the, the tire there, the spare tire and it barely fits. And then I have this other space that you can see here that I use to store other items. But if you were doing it full time and you had a build similar to blue with the, um, the front seat here, which folds back up to become a seat to carry kids. You know, I, I see my kids like pretty much every other weekend. So the front seat actually folds up and I have a minivan again that can carry about four or five people. There's actually room, let me take this to show you. There's actually enough room right here to install the toilet as a working bathroom inside a minivan, even with the front seat in place. Now, I'm going to show you that, even though I can't do it on mine, because mine has a battery pack over there. Actually, two battery packs. I have this house battery, and I have a secondary battery pack right now. So that's making it so you can't put anything there. But I just wanted to show you that it is wide enough that the toilet could go there. So you can see how if you didn't have the battery pack there in the TV stand, you could have this toilet all the way up to the front seat and you actually have a little mini bathroom that you can use without having to dismantle your bed or slide over or do some weird stuff to get access to it. And that to me seems like the most logical layout for a bathroom in a minivan. Um, if you have something like a uh, 2003 Dodge Grand Caravan like mine or possibly any of the Dodge Grand Caravans or uh, Town & Country or similar type vans. You'd have to do actual measurements to see if they fit, but on this 2003 Dodge Grand Caravan, it's a perfect fit. The seat would go up to the front right there, and you have all this room for your leg, and you can use the bathroom, close it, go back to sleep, whatever, because your bed would go right here. Another plane here, hang on a moment. All right, I think the airplane's far away now that you can actually hear me again. The other thing is, even if you have a, a layout like similar to mine, and you wanted to install a house battery pack in this corner here, and you had a little, a uh, little plastic drawer unit like I use to house the um, the whole assembly there. You would actually have enough room to bring it up this far, up to the uh, the drawer unit right there. And then you just have just a little tiny space here for your feet. So it would be a tight squeeze, but you could have a working bathroom that doesn't have to be dismantled. And you could use it like in the middle of the night if you had to get up. Uh, like I said, I would not normally use a bathroom in a van like this, especially number two. I typically will park somewhere um, where I have access to a full-size regular bathroom like 24-hour Planet Fitness 
or Walmart or some other place if I'm urban stealth camping. But if you're like on BLM land out in the middle of nowhere and you don't want to go out in the woods and dig a hole in the dirt, uh, this is something that you could do. You know, you'd set up the bathroom and then it's a working bathroom. And you would also have your bed normally configured. Or in this case, this van can actually be configured a lot of different ways. Right now I have all the, the bed assembly up here front because I was clearing the area out to dig out the, um, the toilet there to show you guys how it all work. If you had a, um, those paint buckets and you made, you know, just use a simple paint bucket um, toilet, you could just set it right there, you know, and then use that. Or you could mount it into the back. Or in a previous build of blue, I actually had a working bathroom back here. I actually mounted it along this wall, and you could sit right here and use the bathroom. I have um, the tires here, which a lot of people would not have to carry inside. But due to uh, the bottom of my vehicle not working correctly, the spare tire, I didn't want to put it on the roof because that was a pain and it made me stand out. I'm carrying the spare tire inside Little Blue 2's um, you know, storage compartment underneath the bed. So that's a lot of space that gets lost. But if you didn't have that, let me show you what you actually have back here if you build something like this. You actually have like a little room back here. And in this room, you could actually put the toilet right there and have a little working bathroom. The only problem with it is, once again, your bed goes on top of the platform. You know, your bed is a platform that comes across. And if you have to go in your vehicle, it's probably going to be an emergency situation. Like in the middle of the night, you're not feeling well and you got to quickly get to the bathroom. So I don't really recommend that. I would recommend putting it right there, like on the side. The other thing that is working against me in a way is, if you'll notice, my bed um, platform is actually the, the front seat, you know, the middle seat right here. Let me take this out of the way here to show you how the system actually works. You can see that slides on back, and I have all my bed stuff. I also have storage right here, which is kind of a mess. My apologies for the mess. But I can flip this up and actually unlock that and flip it. But you can see I have a working um, seat. And that was done specifically because this van still has to function as a van when I pick up my kids, you know, for visitation. But you can see there's plenty of room right there for that toilet to go right on the side. And right now it's just sitting on top of my battery pack. And the reason I don't have that side open is that door is broken. So that's something I will be working on. Don't know if I'm actually going to film it, but the the lock mechanism itself broke off and is inside the the door panel so i've got to disassemble the whole door to get to it but um that to me is like an ideal spot to mount the uh, the toilet so i hope you found this episode help, um, helpful and if you're building your own van or already have a van can start looking at your own vehicle and looking at layouts and uh, the considerations that i've expressed as to where you would want to mount the toilet the key i think is um Getting a unit that won't spill something like this, which if you can't find like I did, you know, can't luck out like I did at the um, Goodwill, you could buy them brand new for about seventy to a hundred dollars or so. Um, pretty much at any store like Walmart or any other sporting goods type store, camping gear and stuff like that, um, and fit it in your open space. If you're a full-time van dweller and you don't have any kids that you have to pick up and you don't need your van to function as a van. You know, and you can just convert it to a motorhome or an RV, you're in a lot better position. Because if that were true for me, this seat would be coming out and this front seat would be coming out. So the bathroom could even be up here at the front or in the middle back here. My feelings about it, I would probably put the bathroom in the middle and this whole front area would actually be a kitchen. I would build a little cooking area up here and have food supplies and whatnot and could actually um, set a little area to cook while I drive because I would still use the inverter cooking system. I may have a propane backup system for when I'm parked in BLM land or something and trying to cook from inside the vehicle, which I don't really recommend. Um, if you can cook without cooking inside the vehicle, you're better off because when you cook inside a vehicle, steam and smoke and the smells come out and permeate you know, all the cloth and everything else you have, even though I myself have been doing it for what two years now using the inverter cooking system that you see right here so my kitchen is actually right here on the floor 
in the rice cooker right there. And I cook while I drive. <laughs> but um, I hope you found this video informative. I want to thank you all for tuning in. And um, feel free to post any questions you have, any comments down below. Please uh, give this video a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. And um, if you have a cool video about how you did your bathroom that you think others might benefit from, be sure to post a link down below so people can take a look at it. I want to thank you all for joining me. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.